Hello, I'm Jim's Alex here, back with some more Space Engineers. Now, even though this webcam thing was entirely not my idea at all, I mean, I've always had a webcam, true, but at the same time, for various reasons, which I won't, I'm not going to bore you guys and try to explain it as to my main reasons for doing this, uh, I have not actually had a face cam for the longest time, um, but like I said, it, it seems like an update in, um, in Radiant settings or something. For some reason, the option enabled itself. But you know what? It doesn't actually look that bad. Not that you really want to see the mess behind me, uh, but <laughs> the actual idea of a face cam, I mean, come on, it's a bit over overdue to be honest, but regardless, here is my face. And also, what are you staring at right now, if, assuming you're not looking directly at me? I mean, that would be a bit creepy, right? <laughs> well, like I said, I am not much to look at, but uh, anyway, it's, we all have a face. Here's mine. Like I said, anyway, um, but we're back here with Space Engineers, and I've been experimenting, uh, at least, this is between uh, last week or so, uh, and the present, as i got to be honest with you, my mind has been, and actually I've just been busy with uh, Warframe, with the Fortuna update. Anyway, uh, I have been experimenting with mobile bases as of late. Essentially, you think of a very large, and in this case, ugly truck. That will have everything that you need, hopefully, uh, for a decent sized base while on the move. Now this version you're seeing, you're looking at right now, is a version 1, and I don't have a name for it. I really have no idea what the name is going to be, so the name in the title will be kind of whatever I could think of rather fast. Um, but essentially, the version 1 here isn't the prettiest, uh, but it does pretty much have all that you need uh, in a mobile base. Well, I mean, looking, it definitely looks very much um, utilitarian rather than actually looking any good. Uh, but anyway, the thing is though with mobile bases, um, even though this is a wheeled design, if you couldn't tell, as I built version 2, which will be next week, uh, which I'll be, that'll be the next week's video, version 2 was actually getting so big and, and the physics of wheels was starting to break down, it never exploded exactly, uh, but uh, as well as, I'll, as you'll see next week, uh, things were starting to get a rather um, yeah on the you know it was, space engineers was telling me that you know things were getting a little bit um, unstable, although saying that things get unstable in space engineers is quite a common thing. Uh, so anyway, yes, the as far as externally goes, it's not much to look at. It's basically just a big truck uh, with a bunch of uh, things on it, I s suppose. Uh, and yes, you can even tell at the back here, I couldn't fit a hanger exactly, but I decided to extend the uh, the wheel arches, as it were, out a little bit further and, uh, well, just a couple of small landing pads you can just put on some uh, small vehicles, I suppose, if you had any uh, like ground speeders or, uh, in this case, a couple uh, black hornets, which a nice sort of small ship, you know what I mean? So I just put, what they put them on the wheels as you... Uh, go about your business. I should have parked on a m bit more of a flatter uh, angle here, so if I actually press this button, it does lower a lift, but the lift is going to push up the vehicle slightly because we're on a bit of an angle. For those who are wondering, what what's this random thing at the top here? Uh, this was meant to be a sort of controllable drill arm. The problem is though, well, I was probably messing around with too many rotors and pistons, and I was driving along one day uh, just testing the vehicle's performance, and the thing just exploded and blew up. That bit did anyway. Uh, even though I have I have a shield generator installed uh, on here, actually, actually I should say that this this um, vehicle uses a lot of mods um, for the most part. Also, if I stand on um, I'm standing on the uh, pad thing here for the lift, and uh, well, my camera is shaking like crazy. I don't know. It's always done that, so it's just a random glitch here. So these, I mean, I was I don't know how you make ramps very easily using rotors, uh, especially since I would want to have two rotors. Um, holding the ramp rather than just one, so I used a simple piston lift. Now, in inside, like I said, it is a bit more on the utilitarian side, but um, which a nice bit of lag there. Uh, but like I said, things get better in version two of this, which, like I said, is next week. Um, even though I wanted to keep this fairly open here, I mean, we do have uh, some windows on either side. Actually, these windows are a kind of a common thing, uh, which I went for in this instance, and you know, it's not. For how big this area is, it, we actually do have quite a few. Uh, I think we have like three decks uh, height. So I made. I mean, okay, it's probably not the best use of the space, but I'd say I've done fairly well uh, to some extent. But we have a simple life support system at the back here with some air, pretty self-explanatory, and a bunch of windows. Even though this window, actually, that window is a bit too long because that was actually a bit mm, wasn't quite how I had to design. But oh, oh, is it because I had a uh, it's because I had a window over here, and I think I had the ship mirrored. Okay, um, that explains that that issue. Um, anyway, but yeah, mainly on the 
lowest floor here. There isn't actually a whole lot. Like I said, this is technically the medium-sized version of this. Uh, version 2 is a behemoth uh, of the same idea of mobile base. And then the third one, which I have on a different planet entirely, the third version of this is actually a bit more down-to-earth, a lot more compact, and probably a lot easier to build and all the above. Um, but yeah, simple couple batteries under the stairs here. Not too much to say with that. Um, refining area and assembly area. I just kind of bundled everything into just this big block on the wall here. Um, and a little bit of cargo storage there. Um, so yeah, that's basically where you would get work done. And I, for some reason, I put the um, arc furnaces all the way over here. But um, I, well, I did that and uh, I'll stick by it. Um, so through here is another airlock. I love using the small ship mega mod pack because it does allow you to, to use... Um, like things like refineries, although a lot more scaled down in size, and I believe it's also been rebalanced, so a small refinery like this, well, it certainly will refine material, as you would expect any refinery to do so, uh, it does it in a bit more of a realistic speed. As you, well, a big ship refinery is a lot bigger and can probably process a lot more ore per second than something like this can, but just having the option uh, to put a refinery in a small ship is certainly one that I still wish, even to this day, was in the vanilla game. Same with every other uh, thing like assemblers and arc furnaces and the like, especially with assemblers. Assemblers, like, okay, let me, let me just go on a slight ramble for a second. But let's say you had a salvage ship, so a grinder-based ship, um, grinding a ship down for parts, well, what if you wanted to completely dismantle everything down to raw components, eh? So this is where having um, small ship assemblers, or in this case on a disassembly roll, would make a lot of sense. Just set just set the, the assembler to disassemble everything, and you can salvage that ship in question, or that vehicle, or whatever you're, whatever you're grinding up in this case, and that's not a euthanism, uh, but you can uh, take it down to its, its constituent components, which, uh, you know, is a certain idea. Uh, so through this airlock, we actually enter the outside on well the outside, but the underside of the uh, the main bridge here. I apparently have left this door open, uh, but left and right are mirrored, and it's essentially the catwalks uh, to the uh, the landing pads for the um, for your ship or speed or whatever you've uh, happened to have parked on top of the wheels, as you can kind of see. So like I said, it is mirrored here. Um, so through here is actually a slightly empty, as I I kind of um, I I. I, I English. I ended up building version 2 of this kind of before I finished tweaking version 1 as I I think after the explosion of the mining arm on the back I kind of lost interest in this uh, vehicle and decided to um, you know use what I have learned from the first creation being this one and making a better version. Or at least I hope it was a better version. I mean it was it was a better version up to the point that physics starts to break or at least should I say the wheels were making very interesting sounds in telling me that uh, the vehicle is too big and too heavy, uh, essentially. But think about it this way. This this vehicle here weighs about a quarter of a million um, kilos in mass, I think. Uh, and the version 2 weighs about three times that. So, um, and believe it or not, version 2 is a, is a small ship like this one. Um, so, yeah. So, there, I could have probably put some more shields in uh, in here. But anyway, that's kind of the, uh, the engine bay at the front uh, to some extent. Or in this case, the reactor bay. Uh, so, let us uh, move on up a level. This level actually doesn't have too much going on here. We have a uh, we do have a cryopo uh, cryopod here, so I can put myself in there and go into cryosleep. And have a drink at the same time and uh, all that. Um, this little section here, I um, the little thing in the wall there, mainly that's to refill any hydrogen canisters you might have for your, on your person, so for your jetpack. Just because, really, this this ship doesn't. Um, I even call. I'm calling it a ship. This vehicle doesn't use any kind of extra propulsion, um, from what I'm aware of. It, it all of its uh, momentum and power is by its wheels. Uh, so any hydrogen generated from the uh, oxygen generators, whatever they are, the the freaking the freaking ice splitters. You know what I mean? Um, whatever the fuck they're called. But the extra hydrogen produced can go into a little bit of storage for uh, your own uh, personal jetpack if you've got any hydrogen canisters in there. Pretty so it's blandry. I have to say my face is actually very white in this webcam. I would probably blame it on the fact that I have Discord, which is mostly white white on this screen. I have YouTube, which is um, uh, over there on the, that screen, and my center screen is well of a white ship. So that is why I might look as pale as a ghost. Although actually I kind of look like that in real life anyway. But uh, anyway, so up up here is the bridge, which I'll get to in a second. Bridge. What am I talking about? Like the cockpit control area. I swear I saw something there, but anyway, uh, through here isn't a whole lot, just a corridor. We actually have a small medical room, which is actually another mod I think I used there, so, 
You know, you get your med supplies there. Primary shield generator. Shields, really, apart from protecting against any random rocks uh, or any, you know, I don't know, angry natives uh, that happen to be around the planet. If they get a, um, a whack in on your ship, they won't immediately blow it up. Um, but it's mainly also just to help with physics so it doesn't, so if the wheels wanted to explode, they can't in this case. Uh, because shields, although this shield generator doesn't actually give a lot of shields, but it's still, it's still something, alright? Uh, and then round the back of the side of this wall here is the large cargo container, which would in this case serve as the primary storage for this, uh, for this base. Now, up here is a bit interesting, because you actually have to crouch to get up here. And indeed, this entire level is only accessible when you're crouching, but... Even though I kind of realised a bit, a little bit too late here. Let's see if I can go into. Uh, yeah, um, I kind of realised that um, uh, this is kind of why in version what in version one is well not really being released per se because I a lot I learned a lot of things um, out you know after building this. But um, oxygen farms in this case cannot really be used under glass it seems. So I learned that the hard way. But um, so I didn't really. Mm. Version 2 kind of fixes that. So I had the idea of having uh, under glass um, oxygen sort of stuff here. So it should give some air and all that. But um, alas, it didn't seem to work. Maybe I'm just not... Maybe I could be not in the light enough. The sun is actually pretty uh, low on the horizon here. Um, I have I did I did actually just end up wandering around Dantus for quite some time. Uh, so I ended up just ending up in that place. And then at the top here, we do actually have a, an airlock system rather than doors. So if I actually get in get in here and uh, stand up. Now if I can remember the buttons here, that should close that one. Um, this was going to be the the uppermost airlock. Uh, the uppermost airlock to the uh, the mining arm. Like I said, it was a double a double long piston design with uh, you control the um, you control this whole thing by the basically using a gyroscope. So the actual rotors themselves for uh, you know horizontal and uh, vertical uh, movement uh, were actually set rather low in terms of their resistance value, and the gyroscope essentially would uh, control that for you, allowing you to with a bit. I mean, it's a little bit jerky of a motion, but you essentially could control yourself, uh, point that drill and mine away. Um, but, well, physics kind of broke up one too many times with this particular design and it blew up, so a little bit sad there. And that little bracket you see up there, which you might have been wondering what was that on top of the ship in the first place, um, essentially the idea was when the thing, when you were done, you would uh, turn the whole thing right around, put the pistons in between that gap just to st stop the whole mining arm from waggling around, as it were. And uh, no matter how many times I say that, that doesn't sound, uh, well, there's an innuendo in there somewhere probably, but... Uh, but yeah, regardless, the whole thing blew up one day, so... Yeah, the the idea was uh, a a decent one, having a bit of a onboard mining for, um, apparatus, as, as it were, on your portable base does kind of make sense. Um, but you know, f physics and space engineers is a lot better than it used to be, but it's still got a long way to go. So, rambling aside, let us actually go to the front of uh, said vehicle and show you the uh, I suppose the bridge, but. Or the cockpit, or whatever you want to call it. But regardless, um, despite how big and goofy this the uh, the whole thing looked uh, from the ground and from the outside, I really do like the amount of glass in this case. It actually does look really nice. Um, plenty of visibility uh, on, on a very high perch. Um, and yeah, plenty of seating for other people. And uh, in this case, this would be the front seat. Um, there is the weight. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the weight of this vehicle. Um, if I can remember what bloody button it is, uh, if it's the weight of the vehicle, including the two black hornets at the back there. Uh, but regardless if it is or is not, I don't remember. Um, but anyway, um, let's actually um, let me show you the one thing that the one thing this vehicle has done very well, actually, for itself, is its uh, actual performance. The actual um, sort of controls of this vehicle, despite this vehicle being actually rather heavy, you know, just over a quarter of a million kilos, this vehicle handles. Yes, exceptionally well. Like, I, I have no other um, external um, forms of um, uh, power and momentum or anything like that, or thrust. It is purely wheel power, but like, if I was to actually, like, say, turn right, it, it's, just, it's very, very responsive, turn left. You know, for a vehicle of such size and such mass, it just handles very well for itself. And, you know, for the most part, as long as you don't catch too much air, of course, and, uh, you know, gaining altitude and or just just jumping in vehicles and engineers never usually ends well not unless you've got some pretty good suspension but even then it's just you know it's not the quickest thing i mean the speed was mostly down to uh i me i don't, I don't even know what what did i even set this to again that's about like there uh come on come on come on come on the the wheels 
my face is in the way. So we was one seventy five kilometers an hour. Didn't want to, didn't want this to go too fast because of how much weight there is, and this is your base, and if it's your base, you don't want it to blow up or lose a wheel. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, regardless, that is the one thing this vehicle did do very well for itself is its handling for such a huge vehicle. Its turning performance is actually very very impressive for such a heavy thing. Um, and for the most part, yes, um, you know, just cruising. Um, sorry for the lag there, but just cruising through Dantas, which uh, doesn't have much terrain. I mean, yes, there are the hills and uh, the mountain ranges over there, but regardless, there there really is not much to say for itself there. We actually do have a little bit of lag there with one of the wheels. I did actually see that uh, wheel glitching out, but, you know, it handles nice sort of flat terrain fairly well. I probably should take these, uh, these portable bases, because like I said, I've made a couple more of these. I should take these and go to the Earth-like planet, which everyone should be familiar with in Space Engineers, and give them a, a quick test drive there, but uh, maybe I'll save that for another video. But anyway, I think that's all I'm going to say for this particular uh, portable base. Um, like I said, whatever I've named it, it'll be in the title of the video somewhere, so uh, you know, regardless of that, I'll have to think of some name. But yeah, don't worry, I've got some better versions of this uh, in the pipeline, and... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to say for this. So yeah, let me, know, let me know what you think of this random thing down below in the comments. Uh, and link to my Discord, anyone say hi to me, is in the description as always. And well, you all know the drill by now. So, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video.